Welcome to our Africa Tech segment. In a conference hall in Mogadishu, girls and women learn the basics of coding as part of the Capitals Tech Summit. The event, aimed at boosting the skill force in the country, focuses on advancing women and girls in the field of ICT. Take a look. In a conference center in the Somali capital Mogadishu, a group of young women are being taught to code. The workshop is organized by Bill and Code, an organization whose stated aim is to empower Somali girls with coding skills. In Somalia, women do not have the opportunity to join the technology sector, and we want to create an opportunity to overcome the challenges they face in the technology sector and create skills to catch up with the market. Among those at the workshop is student Amina Abdi Karim. She says women face discrimination in the ICT sector. The reason I joined the Bill and Codes workshop is to create an advantage for myself and develop my skills. There is a great need for more girls in technology. As you know, women in technology in Somalia is very rare. I came here to improve my knowledge and to teach my society. The Mogadishu Tech Summit, attended by various government officials and featuring an exhibition and a pitching session, was organized by tech incubator Iris Hub. Well, the young entrepreneurs, especially particularly women, have a problem of inclusion, participating in the open space, participating in the discussions and the conversations on the question of innovation and technology. Not that they are lacking the skills. Actually, they do have the skills, but they do not have an equal footing and equal representation in the participation of ICT and innovation sector in the country. So that's the one challenge. But According to a report from Intel in 2017, 25% fewer women than men are online in emerging countries, a figure that rises to 45% in sub-Saharan Africa. Billen says the gender gap is arguably wider in Somalia due to the damage caused to the Horn of Africa country's education infrastructure in decades of armed conflict. Android phone manufacturers may now have to pay up to $40 per phone in order to preload Google's suite of apps onto their product. This is a result of the European Commission's ruling that barred Google from requiring phone makers to bundle Chrome and Search with the rest of its applications. There are a lot of Android applications that depend on Google for various services, so this development will most likely put original equipment manufacturers in a tight spot. To discuss this further, we have with us Kino Alodia, the lead developer at Click Media Solutions. Thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Why the change in Android's app licensing terms by Google? Well, um, there, has been a, there has been a drag in, um, with the European Union and Google for quite some time now. Okay, and this regards how business has been operated in the EU. Okay, so um, Google has restricted phone manufacturers from you know, working with the Android operating system and having their own apps installed. You know, they say if you want to use the Android operating system, you have to, you cannot use the Android operating system, sorry, the one that you designed with, um, what's it called now? You cannot use it with Android oh, apps yeah. on it. Um, okay. Sorry, you cannot use it with Google apps on it. Okay. <laughs> sorry, that skips it. So um, what happens to phone manufacturers now is that they were instructed by Google to install the Chrome browser and the Search browser, which is very dominant in the Google's application suite. You understand? So, um, and then they also paid manufacturers to have Google Chrome and Google Search pre-installed on their devices. Okay, so this makes it difficult for other businesses to come in. Okay, and so that was why they were fined $5 billion in July this year. So in response to that, they were given 90 days, okay, to respond or pay the fine. So in response to that, Google came up and said, okay, we are changing our license. You can now go out. Android is an open source mobile operating system, yeah? So everyone can now go out and build on the Android operating system for mobile phones and run your own. But now to use Google Apps on your system, you would have to pay a license fee. So that is where it so all started. So how will this arrangement work? Well, I think um, major manufacturers now 
will come into play. I believe that the field will be open. Um, I also believe that it will give other technology companies the opportunity to partner with other search engines, open up the market. But then you have the issue of the license fee, which has to be taken care of. You know, so. But I, I think it will work out pretty well, especially for the Android brand. Okay, so why does the cost depend on the pixel density? Mm, well, that's a very good question. Uh, generally, pixel density of a phone tends to determine the value of the phone. The higher it is, the higher the value. Uh, so I think we are not really sure why Google picked the pixel density, but I want to assume that it's as a result of, you know, uh, the more expensive the phone is, the more we think you should pay a higher license. So, okay. If this new fees take effect, what mm -hmm. do you think will happen to Android phones? Uh, well, I think... I think it's I think it will be good for Android phones. Number one, I think it will give um, you know other major technology companies, tech companies, the opportunity to come into the business and create applications that people would use. You know, so I think it will open up the system because right now it's a bit you can consider it a bit caged because Google controls the App Store, and let's not forget that the Play Store that Google controls contains about 3.3 .3 million apps. No, so you see, that's a huge number. And for you to get into the game as a manufacturer, you have to install Google Play Store. And that is where the whole license okay. thing The fees from. will be implemented on phones activated on or or after February the 1st next mm. year. What happens to previously activated handsets? Okay, um, there are two sides to it. One, it depends on the mobile phone manufacturers, yeah? If they go into partnership, for example, we have other search engines like Bing and Yahoo, so if they go into partnership, for example, if Samsung goes into partnership with uh, a Microsoft, for example, I think it, there might be some challenges getting to upgrade to a latest OS, you know, that might be sort of a challenge. But generally speaking, phones that are currently, that we currently use, that are already installed the Android, I, I don't think it would make much of a difference. Okay, let's bring this back to us. How will we be affected by this in Africa? Hmm. Well, in Africa, uh, I think... I think it might not really affect us. Now, here's my point. Um, only if the manufacturers go into partnership with some other technology companies. Yes, so that is when, because you can't have a Samsung and a Microsoft going into a partnership, and then they can't bring in that Samsung and Microsoft phones down to Africa. You know, so it's either they're producing a different type of phone for Africa, and shipping a different type to Europe. But as far as there are, there's a partnership going on, I think the entire cost of Android mobile phones might go up in Africa. Lead developer at Click Media Solutions, Kino Alodia, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank, thank you. you for having me. Well, that's it on the program today. Thanks for watching. I'm Tenyola Shubowale.